off to this Mass for Francis Murray. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. That we may celebrate worthily the sacred mysteries, we call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to my brothers and sisters that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us life everlasting. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O oh God, through your word, you reconcile the human race to yourself in a wonderful way. Grant that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten towards the solemn celebrations yet to come through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. The people of God entered the promised land and there kept the Passover. The Lord said to Joshua, Today I have removed the reproach of Egypt from you. While the Israelites were encamped at Gilgal on the plains of Jericho, they celebrated the Passover on the evening of the 14th of the month. On that day, after the Passover, they ate of the produce of the land in the form of unleavened cakes and parched grain. On that same day, after the Passover, on which they ate of the produce of the land, the manna ceased. No longer was there manna for the Israelites, who that year ate of the yield of the land of Canaan. The word of the Lord.
God reconciled us to himself through Christ. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, whoever is in Christ is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. And all of this is from God, who has reconciled us to himself through Christ and given us the ministry of reconciliation. Namely, God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. So we are ambassadors for Christ, as if God were appealing through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who did not know sin, so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. with you. <clears throat> A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to listen to Jesus. But the Pharisees and scribes began to complain, saying, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. So to them Jesus addressed this parable. A man had two sons. <clears throat> and the younger son said to his father, Father, give me some share of your estate that should come to me. So the father divided the property between them. After a few days, the younger son collected all his belongings and set off to a distant country where he squandered his inheritance on a life of dissipation. When he, had spent, when he had freely spent everything, a severe famine struck the country, and he found himself in dire need. So he hired himself out to one of the local citizens who sent him to his farm to tend the swine. He longed to eat his fill of the pods on which the swine fed, but nobody gave him any. Coming to his senses, he thought, how many of my father's hired workers have more than enough food to eat? But here I am, dying from hunger. I shall get up and go to my father, and I shall say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. Treat me as you would treat one of your hired workers. So he got up and went back to his father. While he was still a long way off, his father caught sight of him and was filled with compassion. He ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. His father quickly ordered, his father ordered his servants, quickly bring the finest robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Take the fattened calf and slaughter it. Let us celebrate with a feast because this son of mine was dead and has come back to life. He was lost and has been found. Then the celebration began. 
Now the oldest son had been out in the field, and on his way back, as he neared the house, he, sound, he heard the sound of music and dancing. He called one of his servants and asked what this might mean. The servant said to him, Your brother has returned, and your father has slaughtered the fattened calf, because he has him back safe and sound. He became angry. And when he refused to enter the house, his father came out and pleaded with him. He said to his father in reply, Look, all these years I have served you, and not once did I disobey your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat to feast on with my friends. But when your son returns, who swallowed up your property with prostitutes, for him, you slaughter the fattened calf. He said to him, My son, you are here with me always. Everything I have is yours. But now we must celebrate and rejoice, because your brother was dead and has come back to life again. He was lost and has been found. The Gospel of the Lord. tough to be lost. I remember on some family rides, my father would head off to some new direction. And after a while it became apparent we were lost. My mother would say, there's a fire station, pull over. No. There's a policeman, turn around. No. Finally, she says, she put a foot down on the, on the passenger side and the car somehow stopped and we got directions. It's not easy <laughs> to be lost. <laughs> I remember once uh, we were in college, long before I took to the woods regularly, we got lost in the woods of New Jersey. The woods of New Jersey? You should have been out of those in a minute. I think we all know what it feels to be lost. And of course, today that is the ending of the gospel. Y your brother is, was dead and is lost and has been found. The lost coin, the lost widow, uh, the lost sheep. We've all been on the receiving end of being lost. But we do not want to be lost to the love of God and the Lord's forgiveness. Uh, we want to always stay in his graces. Um, today as we hear this gospel, every, every viewpoint in this gospel is compelling. And we've heard this, like the Good Samaritan, we've heard this gospel time after time and we know the conclusion. From the son who squandered the property, uh, we can sympathize. We can sympathize with the brother who's irate. As parents, you can uh, stand in your own shoes and say, I've been there. I've been there. And so what parent would not welcome home a son or daughter who confesses lack of experience or injury or something like that? You take them back. You know, there's more rejoicing in heaven over one repentant sinner than over many who have no cause or need to repent. And so today's gospel, as we come here uh, in the midway through Lent, uh, talks about the necessity, I think, of approaching God our Father for forgiveness. The youngest son knew it. And he had a well-rehearsed well speech. He went to the Father and all was forgiven. He was given back the, the signs of his own uh, inheritance, the ring and the robe. And of course we read right in the beginning of the letter of 1 Peter that we are given a great inheritance in Jesus Christ and that we shall not lose this. And this is the most precious thing we have. We are called, I believe, by St. Paul, heirs to the kingdom of God, co-heirs uh, with Jesus Christ. 
And, and so there, there are so many beautiful things that God our Father wants to lavish upon us, not only being called his sons and daughters, but forgiveness where it is in order, and also a kingdom, a kingdom, a one for us by the blood of his son. You know, we might think that as this son did, that God might play favorites between one son and another, between his son and the daughter. And of course, that's not the way the Lord operates in heaven, that he loves us all. And so today's gospel is certainly a compelling call uh, for reconciliation and to seek it as well, to be willing to forgive, uh, to forgive. So as we hear today's gospel, we uh, just call to that uh, and uh, we celebrate that fact in this liturgy as well. I think we'll do the uh, vocation chalice now, the, the Scaria family. We present this chalice to you and commission you to pray each day of the week for vocations to the priesthood, religious life, and consecrated lay life. We join our prayers to yours that the Lord will raise up many holy and dedicated men and women to the priesthood, religious life, and consecrated lay life from this parish. May those whom God has called always have the freedom and the insight to hear his call, the courage to respond to it, and the support of this parish, St. Bridget's, to follow him. Holy Mother of the Good Shepherd, turn your motherly care to our Archdiocese of Boston. Intercede for us to the Lord of the harvest to send more laborers to the harvest. Inspire vocations in our time. Let the word of your Son be made flesh anew in the lives of persons anxious to proclaim the good news of everlasting life. Draw them near your Son so they can understand the beauty and the joy that awaits them when the Lord Jesus calls them to be his witnesses. Amen. Profess the faith and profess the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He arose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father, the Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. There are two collections today. The first is for the parish, and the second, as I mentioned last week, is for the uh, church in the Ukraine. Our offertory is number 665, Hosea, number 665.
pray, brothers, praise Jesus at our hearts in this our sacrifice that these become gifts acceptable to God, the Father, the Almighty. <clears throat> Be pleased, Lord, with these sacrificial offerings. Grant that we who beseech pardon for our own sins may take care to forgive one another through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ. By a gracious gift each year, your faithful people await the sacred Paschal feasts with the joy of minds made pure, so that more eagerly intent on prayer and on works of charity and parts it participating in the mysteries by which they have been reborn, they may be led to the fullness of grace that you bestow on your sons and your daughters. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and the powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory. <laughs> You are the fountain of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and the eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Story of faith. celebrate the memorial of his death and his resurrection we offer you Lord the bread of life and this chalice of salvation 
giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking the body and the blood of Christ that we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, especially the Ukraine. Bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Sean, our Bishop, and all the clergy and the religious. Remember your daughter and your servant, Francis Murray, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that Francis, who was united with your son in a death like his, that Francis Murray be one with him in the glory of the resurrection. Remember our brothers and our sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, Saint Bridget, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co to eternal life that we may praise you and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. <laughs> Savior's command and taught by divine teaching we dare to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lord, deliver us, we pray from every evil, grant us peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but upon the faith of your church, Grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace be with you all.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Looking ahead, um, the food pantry uh, will be doing the Easter food drive on April 2 and 3 before and after each Mass. Uh, the donation vehicle will be parked in front of the school. The Holy Week and Easter schedule uh, is now published on the parish website and Facebook. Towards the Catholic Appeal. Uh, together we have already raised $15,000 towards our parish goal of $80,000. Uh, we are pretty much uh, still early into the program. Please stand for our prayer. Let us pray. Look upon those who call to you, Lord, and sustain the weak. Give life by your unfailing light. To those who walk in the shadow of death, bring those rescued by your mercy from every evil to reach the highest good through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Our session was number 398, Be Thou My Vision, number 398.